Okay, thank you for those ideas. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm honored to be here. I'm a theoretical sociologist, uh, and uh, uh, this year I published uh, uh, English written book uh, Japanese, on Japanese social theory, but uh, uh, recently I'm concentrating on the local studies. Uh, well, uh, today's presentation is closely related to the global, uh, global uh, studies. So this is content. Next. And uh, first of all, uh, we will check uh, the brief history of uh, mobility in Japan. Uh, from Japan to South America uh, in the first stage of modern Japan. And uh, from Western countries to uh, Japan. And uh, number four, uh, contemporary Japan uh, from Asian countries to uh, Japanese. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, let me check uh, briefly in uh, modern Japan. Uh, modern uh, Japan has started since 1968. Uh, then the first uh, Japanese immigrants uh, left Japan to Hawaii, North America. After uh, that, <coughs> to South America, uh, such as Peru, Brazil, and uh, Argentina. At the same time, um, some European countries, uh, people, uh, came to Japan. And in uh, Peru, Japan, uh, 3,000 farmers immigrated to Northeast China, Manchuria. And uh, in post-war uh, Japan, uh, since 1945, the uh, US Army came to Japan. And uh, finally, a lot of babies were born between American soldiers and Japanese women. And uh, after the 1950s, the Japanese government enacted some laws, including the alien administration laws. And uh, uh, for example, uh, another case in Taiwanese inhabitant in, uh, in Japan uh, lost their own nationality uh, because of the illustrations of uh, diplomatic ties between Japan and China in 1972. As a result, a part of Taiwanese became a stateless uh, person. Uh, we can find uh, uh, in this process, uh, a kind of logic of exclusion. Okay, and uh, the rapid economic growth in post-war Japan required mass laborers, but they are supplied by uh, surplus population in rural area in Japan. And uh, plus uh, logic of exclusion, I refer to. Uh, these processes uh, could be regarded as a, a prelude to construct the myth uh, that Japan is composed of a radically homogeneous, uh, racially homogeneous nations for a more racial myth. And Japan began to be called as a closed country. In contemporary sociology, since in the 1980s, labor shortage, especially in its younger generation, has become apparent to me. So uh, in 1990, a new training program for foreigners was introduced. However, uh, most tra trainees worked actually as workers. So uh, since 2008, uh, we've been uh, visiting a village uh, in order to research uh, with a focus on building Together. So uh, KBH population is approximately uh, 4,000 uh, nowadays, received more than 800 uh, foreigner trainees. And uh, they are called trainees, but actually they are uh, as uh, they work as workers. And uh, there is uh, some problems, but uh, we especially paid attention to the gross, grassroots interactions, uh, especially uh, typical intermarriage 
is between Japanese husband and the Chinese or Asian wives. And uh, uh, in Cambridge, uh, there are some uh, remarkable uh, outstanding uh, papers. So uh, we can focus on the green line. And so a Chinese little marriage to Uma and Japanese returnees from Italy, from China. And uh, there's a okay. uh, there's a is a Filipino. They work as a mediator. Uh, this person seems to be active a mediator with sympathy with both trainee and the farmers. Uh, uh, we are calling them sympathizer and mediators. Even in a big uh, earthquake catastrophe, uh, we can find uh, the mediators. So, next. Uh, Thank you, Professor. And I will take over that. And now I would like to share our field research. And uh, our field research location is, and in, is a first town for fishing here and uh, severe damage by the earthquake of tsunami two years ago, as we know. And here, um, now I'm moving to the object, to our you know, migrants research. And I would like to share the two types of migrants. And the first one is for me, for me migration type one, labor migration, you know, falling trees in the old town. And um, the town serves 44 trees Chinese from China, they are mainly women, and they grew in 29 years after the disaster. And you know, like, you know, the original reason why they are coming to Japan was just, you know, what they wanted to earn money, but it's amazing, like, you know, there is a transformation of the reasons. And they say, like, they felt like to do something for the, the companies because the director treated them well and it would save their lives. So they returned back, I mean, the 29 returnees. And it's kind of, you know, understandable because the rural area, especially in Japan, where family responsibilities and work can be combined. And we could say that, you know, the one person, like, you know, employer could treat her employees, like, um, their family members in such a small community. But still, there is a kind of limitation with the trainees. Because, um, limitation, trainees to be member to the locals. They can speak Japanese, I mean the language barriers. And also less closeness with locals, and they have to leave them just within three years. And when they have got a problem, they need support, of course. And uh, they ask the Chinese woman, woman who married to Japanese locals, and she helped the trainees out. So now we are focusing on the, those intermarriage migrants. And this is the type two, what I want to discuss. And now, in Japan, intermarriage is very huge. And they dramatically change Japan's status as a homogeneous to diverse just in the 50 years. And here, and the last part I learned, but uh, it is, um, uh, how can I say that? Um, and the shortage of bread in Japan has been got much attention in living in these rural areas since the unit of farming there has double functions production and reproduction, like the top area which I am focusing on now. And now we are paying special attention to the actions of large migrants as a mediators after disasters. And we have we used to have the learn just after the disaster. Like the intermarriage migrants don't care Japan and just they flee away from Japan. But it is not true according to our research. And after the disaster attacked everywhere in the area, no matter who she is, or she is Japanese or not. And we realize that everyone at the list now, it will be. So some large migrants in that area suddenly think what they should do as a local, not marry someone from came from the abroad. And here's some mediator cases, and I want to show the second one. And she is a Filipina who whom we call AS. And she's a middle-aged Filipina who married to Japanese man for 35 years, very long. And after the disaster, she built a building 
um, she built a school where beginners in the earlier can learn Japanese. And because she, she regrets the trust that some other beginners were swept away by the tsunami, and since they could not understand Japanese. And also, she now gives not only Japanese language lessons, but also lessons to qualify as national certificate home helpers. Because why, um, the reason why the Filipinos needed the certification is because since some of their husbands were dead or lost their work places. So the Filipinos felt the need to learn, earn income for their families. And the short path to find a job in Japan could be acquiring certification as home helpers for elder people. And, uh, I'm sorry, I skipped some <laughs> case, case studies, but I just want to five minutes. Yeah, six minutes. So discussion was from disaster. Um, so through the family for me, immigrants used to neglected or captured as a labor or tools for reproductions. The disaster also washed away such concepts and people are now in need to reconstruct their new concept for the multicultural convivial society. But what is conviviality? I don't know the reason. And uh, Professor Ishtar here suggested we need to classify the phase of conviviality as follows. And there is a seven phases. And before disaster, the foreign trainees at the five, fifth stage, like a co working with your co workers. The Mars migrants, we have a kind of mutual profit, but disaster changed, transformed all the systems. And another factor for multicultural for joyfulness is the mediators, because the mediators have multiple social chapters, and these mediators can promote grassroots aid for migrants. So disaster changed everything. Uh, we enter into concrete relapse. Our, our focus is on these words result in and uh, concept of society and uh, uh, transnationalism reconsidered. So we can pay special attention to some cases from a viewpoint of Kyosei in Japanese. Kyo means together and Sei means living. We call it conviviality. Uh, originally, it is uh, by uh, it was by uh, elite at the time. And uh, anyway, uh, nowadays, what is required is much ethnic convivial society based on the marriage, uh, mutual helping, mutual profit, and the sympathy, and mutual caring in relationship. And next, uh, are we focusing only on one society within the nation state? demarcated by the national border, at least in Northeast Asian context. So uh, there are some uh, territorial debates or uh, battles uh, there in Northeast Asia, but uh, we can see this model even in contemporary Asian world. Transnational exchange is important, a key word. So, uh, I propose a methodological transnationalism. Uh, there are three types of two, uh, three types are to be distinguished. Uh, transnationalism as a fact, as a methodology, as an ideal thought, social thought. In order to research one, for the time being, methodological transnationalism should be adopted in the age of globalization along with three. Uh, this is our proposal. So, uh, Final words focusing on society beyond the nation state and from methodological nationalism to methodological transnationalism. Uh, this is a very important part. Thank you for attention.